how to maximize profits. Yep. So we're on page 57. Five, seven. Let's get our slave board There we go. Our slave All right. Board. So there's three steps to this. Okay. Well, okay. So before we can even start this, we need to review how to grasp by intercepts. Okay. And this, you guys actually liked this when we did this. We just haven't done it in a while. So. All right, so let's say I have 2x plus 8y equals 16. Okay. When we found intercepts, instead of getting this to equal y, does anybody remember when we did like the cover-up method? Okay, so to solve for x, we covered up y, right? And we had 2x equals 16, right? So x equals 8, right? That point is going to be 8, 0. Okay, so then we would put a point at 8, 0. Okay, and then I'm going to cover up my x. I have 8y equals 16, so y is 2. So this point is 0, 2. So I have that. There's my line. Coming back to you mm -hmm. a little bit. We'll lay it. We didn't spend a super a lot of time on this, but this is going to come in super duper handy. Now, so let's say I've got 5x minus 3y equals 30. First step. Cover up y. 5x equals 30. So x is 6. What point is this? 6, 0. Right there. All right, and then cover up my x. I have negative 3y equals 30. So y is negative 10. So this point is 0, negative 10. You got your line through those two points. Thumbs up? Way easier than solving for y, right? Because I'm like, why did you show this one earlier? I don't know. Because I'm mean. Alright, so Willy Wonka, they make Wonka bars and everlasting dog stoppers. So here's the deal. We're going to do most of these together in class because they are very hard to set up. So what I need from you guys, number one, I need you to be my calculator. So everybody get your calculators so that I've got some button pushers. All right, and the second thing I need you to do is make sure that you are doing this with us. So we're really only going to get through probably two of these problems today. Tomorrow you are going to be graded on, did you actually do these with us in class? Yep, like write it down on your paper. You actually have to have it all there. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you through these and do these with you, but you have to be willing to do these with us. Okay? All right. So we've got Wonka bars and everlasting dog stoppers. <laughs> Sorry. We have the Oompa Loompas and the Fuzzy Fizzies, right? The Fuzzy Fizzies, they're, there's like two separate groups. The, the Oompa Loompas, they do a lot of work, but the Fuzzy Fizzies are another group. They got to do some work. I know it's not from the story. Okay, this is this is in my Never Never Land, so I'm I'm writing my own play back. Come on. <laughs> All right, so the Oompa Loompas. I don't have the Oompa Loompa. I wish I had. So 
we've got we've got the Oompa Loompas, and their equation. The Oompa Loompas spend how many minutes making lump bars? They, yep. So Oompa Loompas are right here. So six minutes for Wonka bars plus what? Four minutes for making what? Everlasting, Everlasting dog covers. That's made by the Jeep for dog covers. How long can they work? They can work 6,000 minutes per day. Can they go over 6,000 minutes? No, so that's got to be less than or equal to 6,000 minutes. All right, and then we've got fuzzy fizzies. And fuzzy fizzies <coughs> spend how many minutes wrapping them? They spend one minute wrapping a wonka bar plus how long to wrap an everlasting gobstopper? Two minutes for gobstoppers, but they only get to work for how long? 1,200 minutes per day. So we have our two equations, yes? All right. So since we have those, oh dang, I wish I could struggle with that. I'm going to struggle with this. All right. So we're going to use our cover-up method in order to do these with our intercepts. So for our Oompa-Loompas, if I cover up, first let's say that, let's go with G is our X, W is our Y. I know it's kind of opposite of what we normally do, but that's okay. So cover up method, if I'm going to cover up my 6W, I have... 4G is less than or equal to 6,000. So G is going to be how much? 1,500? Yep. So this point is what? If G is X, it's going to be 1,500, 0, right? All right, so now let's do our bottom one. 2G. Oh, wait. We got to do our other one, right? I'm sorry. I don't. We got to cover up our 4G. We have 6W is less than or equal to 6,000. So W is less than or equal to 1,000. So this point is. Zero one thousand. Everyone's got that stuff done. All right, you've got all your work on there. A couple of people still writing. I'll wait a couple seconds here. All right, I'm going to scroll up. So this is going to. Everyone's got that written down. So if I scroll up and this goes away, we're good. All right, so let's label this. We've got X and Y, right? Let's go by, let's go to the bottom by hundreds. So 100, 200, 300, 400. I'm only going to label like my 500, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1,500, right? This is 500. Like that? Are we good there? And then the same thing. One, two, three, four, five hundred. One, two, three, four, one thousand. Okay, so what was my first point that we found? Fifteen hundred, comma, zero. So 
flat right here, right? We need that, and then we're going to label it. 1500. And what was our other point? 1,000. I'm going to put a point at 1,000. And that <coughs> 0, 1,000, right? And we can draw our line. So let me help me out with what my two equations was. My Wonka's or my Oompa Loompa's was Thousand. Okay, and my fuzzy fizzies are twelve hundred. Thank you. All right, so now we got to do fuzzy fizzies, right? Okay, so we're going to cover up our W. We have two G is less than or equal to twelve hundred. So G is less than or equal to six hundred. That point is, why do I keep putting commas right on them? 600, 0. Okay, our other one, cover up our G. I have 1 W is less than or equal to 1200. Aren't sure you getting this stuff down? Okay, so W is less than or equal to 1200. So this point is, 0, 1,200, so 600, 0 is right here, 1,200, or 0, 1,200 is right there, so 0, 1,200, and 600, 0, <coughs> looks like that, right? So that, Step one. There's three steps to this. I know, I told you they were going to be super long. Alright, step two, we have to figure out where those guys intersect. Right? So let's write these with an equal sign. We've got 6w plus 4g equals 6,000. 1w plus 2g equals 1,200. Let's solve this by elimination. What do we have to multiply the bottom equation by? 2. Okay, we can do 6 or 2. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I heard 2. Let's do 2. So my top equation, I still have 6w plus 4g equals 6,000. Bottom equation is going to be 2w plus equals 2,400. So I have 4w equals... 3,600. So W is 900. And then we got to plug that in for what? W? Well, but right now it's W, right? Yeah. Okay, so 900 plus 2G equals 1,200. So now what? Minus 900, so 2G equals 300. G is 150. So these guys intersect where? 150, comma, 900. Good. Alright, so we're going over to 150, which is halfway between 100 and 200, right? And up to 900, which is right 
and label this 150, 900. Okay, now the only place that we're going to make profits is underneath these lines. So right there is where we can make a profit. <laughs> Anything above that is impossible. Anything in here, we're going to lose money. stuff, right? All right. So now let's figure out what my highest profit is. This is what we call a profit equation. Okay? I make 25 cents on each what? Wonka bar plus 15 cents on each gobstopper. Okay, now remember what we did x and y. Let's change this to 0.25. What's my w? Go right by y plus 0.15x, right? This is what we're going to use to decide what my profit is or what is my maximum profit. So if I go back and I look, these three points that my green touches are, what's this one? Well, but you need more than 1,000. No, read it. Zero, 1,000. You've got to be careful. Okay, so we're going to check. The first one that we're going to check is zero. 1,000 and figure out what our profit is. So we're putting zero in for who? X, 1,000 in for what? So 0.25 times who? Ah, what's Y? 1,000. You have to make sure that you watch your letters. Plus 0.15 times what's X? Zero. So, button pushers, 0.25 times 1,000. 250 plus zero. So this gives me a profit of how much? $250. Okay. Again, same profit equation. What's my next one that it touches? 150, 900. So we're going to check. That's not my profit equation. There it is. All right, so the next one that I'm checking is. 150, what did you say? What was my intersection point? 900? Alright, so 0.25 times 900, because that's my Y, plus 0.15 times what's my X? 150. Alright, so what's 0.25 times 900? Huh? 225. Plus 22.5. So you guys know? Yeah. All right. Gives me a profit of 147 dollars and 50 cents. Right. And then the third point that it touches is what? What's the third point that this guy touches? 600 comma zero. So, whew. Off an equation, now we've got to go 600 
on the zero, so point two five times mass zero. This is our property equation, Elijah. Or Jonah. I don't know where I got Elijah from. I don't even have an Elijah this year. <laughs> so zero plus point one five times what's my x? Six hundred. Okay, so 0.25 times 0? 0 plus 0.15 times 600? So what's my profit if I do it this way? $90. So where is my biggest profit? Up here, right? And what was that? That was what if the... What? If they package 0, who is this? Gobstoppers and a thousand Wonka bars is where their highest profit is going to be. That's a bull load of work, isn't it? Okay, that's why we're doing a lot of this together. All right, so we are going to flip to number five. So number five is on page 61. Okay, so let's make sure that we keep participating in this. Otherwise, you're going to have to do it on your own. All right, so I thought this one was super hard to make the equations from. So it says, baking a tray of corn muffins takes four cups of milk and three cups of wheat flour. Baking a tray of bran muffins takes two cups of milk and three cups of wheat flour. A baker has 16 cups of milk and 15 cups of wheat flour. Okay, the rest is profit. So we only we do profit right at the end, right? Yeah. All right. No, it's not going to come. Okay, it's not going to come. All right, so we're gonna split, what we're going to split this into is milk and flour. Okay. And with my milk and flour, I have corn muffins and bread muffins, right? So with my milk, how many cups of milk does it take for my bread muffin? Two cups of milk for my bread muffins, plus how many cups of milk for my corn muffin? Four cups of milk for my corn muffins, and that's going to be less than or equal to how much milk do I have? I have 16 cups of milk. Okay. So then my flour, how many cups of flour do I need for my bread muffin? Three cups for bread muffins. Plus, how many cups for corn muffins? Three cups for corn muffins. And how much flour do I have? Fifteen cups of flour. Okay. So my first step is to do what? Break them up. Yes. Because that's uh, that's how much they have, so they can't go over that. Okay. So what's our first step? Yeah, so we have to graph our intercepts, right? All right, so let's cover up our B. We have 4C is less than or equal to 16. So C is forward. What point is that? Ooh, let's have all this. Let's keep this with B equals X, C equals Y. Let's, let's keep them in order like we normally do. Okay, so this is 0, 4. Okay, and then I'm covering up my 4C. I have 2B is less than or equal to 16. So B is 8. So this point is 8, comma 0. So when I'm labeling my graph this time, would you go by hundreds again? Probably by ones, right? 
So this guy can be 5, this guy can be 10, this guy can be 15, same thing up here, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, this one's 10. <coughs> Alright, so 8, 0, is right here, label him, 8, 0, super important to label, and 0, 4, Right here, draw our line. All right, so now we've got to do flower, right? Okay, so if I cover up my B, I have 3C is less than or equal to 15. So C is 5. What point is that? 0, 5. And same thing with 3, or with the B. 3B is less than or equal to 15. B is going to be 5, but what point is this? This one's 5, 0. So 5, 0, 0, 5. Now my line goes this way. All right, so that's step one. What's step two? Put it into what? Yep, so now we have to solve the system. So <coughs> QB plus 4C equals 16. 3B plus 3C equals 15. Can I get by with multiplying this one? No. So I'm going to multiply both. Multiply the top by 3, bottom by 2. So top would be 16 plus 12. 12C equals 48. Bottom is 6B plus 6C equals 30. So 6C equals 18, C is 3. Alright, so now we're going to plug it in. 2B plus 4 times 3? 12. 16. 2B equals 4. B is 2. My intersection point is? Plus three 
C. What's X and what's Y? C is X. C is Y, right? So 2X plus 3Y. How many times do you have to plug this in? Three times. We've got to do it three times. So 2 times 0 plus 3 times 4 gives us $12 profit. Okay, next one, 2 times 2 plus 3 times 3 gives us 4 plus 9, yep, yeah, which is $13 profit. So you were right. <laughs> and then 5, 0 was 2 times 5 plus 3 times 0 gives us $10 profit. So who makes us the most profit? This guy. What's that mean? It means if we make Yeah, our trays. If we make two trays of corn muffins and three trays of bread muffins with what I have, that's how I maximize my profit. If I don't make any trays of bread muffins and four trays of corn muffins, I only make 12 bucks. If I make five of corn muffins and three of, no, other way, five of bread muffins, no corn muffins, I only make $10. But if I make two bran muffins and three corn muffins, that's where the money's at. Still, if you're a business person and you multiply this by, because this was only making five trays, right? Let's say we've got a thousand cups of flour in a big business. This goes multiplies a lot, right? This might be something that you do in your kitchen. But if I'm, but if I'm running a business and I want to know how much how I'm going to maximize my profits, this is how I'm going to do it. Okay?